Give us your thoughts on who you would like to fight in this year. I'm Roy Jones Jr. I don't give a kill. Fight fans, welcome back. And that's that! Later this month, Roy Jones returns to face a former heavyweight destroyer. A generational legend with so much ability and love for the sport, Jones has been unable to walk away. I'll play games. I do this. Fans recall the slick pound for pound star who once illuminated their screens. Still the undisputed. The skills have been eroded by Father Time, just like his November opponent. But Roy's legacy looms large as the appeal of two boxing icons remains. Look how fast he's going! <laughs> I know. Look how scary he is! Here we look back to the night when the Pensacola Fighters stock hit an all-time high. On the night, Roy Jones Jr. looked unbeatable. There's nowhere to run in that ring. You can't, you know, he's gonna have to run out of those ropes. This fight elicits the broadest range of opinions from experts I've ever seen. Welcome to a Motivedia presentation. Boy, if Roy Jones is able to go 12 rounds with this guy, we've let the cat out of the bag. He can do anything. Only dream about. I told you how to tape up my hands when I sleep at night because I'd be hitting the walls trying to fight somebody. You know what I'm saying? I love to fight. This is what I do for a living. When are they going to wake up and realize this? As the boxing calendar opened for 2003, Roy Jones Jr. was at the peak of his powers. The best fight in the world, bro. bro. Tonight. Enjoying huge commercial success as a widely recognizable crossover sports star away from the ring, Jones was seemingly unbeatable inside the ropes. His athletic gifts and sparkling skills made the Florida native boxing's number one fighter. I don't care what your name is, if it's Antonio Tarver, Bernard Hopkins, James Mikachewski, whatever your name is, if you're the number one contender, I got to beat you. You already got under contract with me. Boasting a 134 fight amateur career, Jones's mass appeal stemmed from a shocking decision in the 1988 Seoul Olympics when he was denied the gold medal due to boxing politics so potent the entire amateur code was rocked. The Korean knew he had lost a fight. He didn't want to raise his hand. It was the worst decision in the history of amateur boxing. Roy Jones stars. Got all about what the gold meant anything. My only thought was, you know, that's him out there clan. That's my kid out there clan. Competing as a professional, aside from a contentious ninth round disqualification against Montel Griffin in 1997, when Roy hit Griffin as the challenger took a knee, Jones had never looked close to a defeat. By 2002, Roy had cemented his position as undisputed light heavyweight king and spent the year dominating solid future champion Clinton Woods before audaciously toying with unbeaten Aussie Glenn Kelly. guys seem to be forgetting and thinking that I'm a nice guy something. I am nice, but I'm awful crucial with these hands. What's up, Pensacola in the house? After establishing himself as the pound-for-pound pound number one and master of his era, Jones craved a defining night and sought out a reigning heavyweight world champion. And here we go. Now, Roy Jones, 33 years old, talking about heavyweights. He's going to try to move up there. This guy's 5'11". I, I, I can talk about heavyweights, too. <laughs> I talk about heavyweights every week. Aiming to be the first former middleweight ruler to capture heavyweight glory since Bob Fitzsimmons in 1897, Jones's initial rise to prominence was boosted in 1993 when he battered future legend Bernard Hopkins for the vacant IBF 160-pound strap. Nailed Hopkins again. You can't teach anybody that. That's natural talent. Jones went on to snatch away James Tony's unbeaten record and his IBF crown at super middle, making six imperious defenses before once again moving up in weight to tackle the best at light heavyweight. What about trying to take punches from punchers like Moore and Holyfield? I'd like to see one of those guys try and hit Roy Jones. I don't think it can happen. Now you see me, now you don't. Seeking out even bigger challenges, Roy's desire to take those razor-sharp reflexes and showcase his talents up at heavyweight 
was the boldest move yet. Very interesting fight of significant historical interest. A light heavyweight champion, a man once the champ at 160 pounds, moving up to fight a top 10 heavyweight who could weigh in at 235. Especially in a division packed full of heavy-handed behemoths like Lewis, Mike, Rockman, and the fast-rising Klitschko brothers. 15 fighters have moved up in weight class to challenge for the heavyweight title. Only two of those 15 have won, and only one in the last century. To achieve greatness, there would be no easy option. Step forward, John the Quiet Man Ruiz, a 226-pound, 6'2 brawler from Massachusetts who held the WBA belt. And the new heavyweight champion of the world, El Primer Campeón Latino, Quiet Man, John Ruiz! Never the most pleasing on the eye, Ruiz was a solid competitor with a strong right hand. Promoted by the enigmatic Don King, after grinding his way through three fights with Holyfield, Ruiz showed that he was a tough night's work for any heavyweight. Holyfield stumbling and bumping around. Ruiz is trying to knock him out. Ruiz continues to score. That's it. Unanimous decision for the first fighter of Latino descent to win a share of the heavyweight title. In 1996, Ruiz had been brutally dismantled in 19 seconds by the devastating left hook power of Samoan slugger David Tua. Tua comes right at him, another big bomb, and Ruiz is down. This could almost be over now. Seven years later, he was defending a world title, displaying a stubborn resilience to compete and remain at top level. This one. Oh, good shot. For Roy Jones, this was no small task in any sense. John being so fast and this and that one. Look at my scenario here. Does the pimp catch his hole when he she owes him? <laughs> and she owes him money. There's nowhere to run in that ring. You can't, you know, he's gonna have to run out of those ropes. Yeah! Because I'm gonna be chasing him and I'm gonna be on top of him. After defeating unbeaten Kirk Johnson via disqualification in 2002, Ruiz too craved bigger names. Roy's name certainly carried weight, but his smaller frame meant that the champion would naturally hold the physical advantages in size and power. Well, I think that Ruiz is going to stop him late in the fight, and uh, I think that he's going to find that 33 pounds of a true heavyweight pulling on your arms, pulling on your neck, uh, wears you out after a while. And if he gets to the point in the fight where he can't move uh, with, a, with his normal speed, He's a dead you to Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas. With the likes of De La Hoya, Mosley, and Costa Zoo in the pound-for-pound -pound listings, 2003 had got off to a slow burn. And so Roy Jones was eager to ignite the boxing spark with a daring attempt at history. People constantly ask me, why you take this fight? Why you take this fight? Why you take this fight? Well, for a lot of reasons I took the fight. Um, for one, we get tired of seeing me beat up on people my size. It's just start feeling unfair. Making his third defense of his title. Welcome the WBA heavyweight champion of the world, John, the quiet man, Ruiz, Roy Jones Jr. I'm telling you, he's scared you. The guy is starting to realize he bit off a little bit more than he can chew. He's in for it. There's nothing in his past that'll ever prepare him for what he's going to get Saturday night. He's in for it. I just want to see the look on his face when Johnny steps in that ring and he's prancing back and forth. I want to see Jones's face. Entering as a betting favorite due to his previous body of work, fighting as a legitimate heavyweight champion came with the huge risk of one misstep ending in disaster, especially for a boxer like Jones, outweighed by 25 pounds on the night and giving up a reach advantage. That looks fine. To get an answer to an age-old question, can two fighters who have frequently been cautious be rubbed together to create sparks? Ruiz goes to the body to start out and drives Jones into the ropes. Despite holding these statistical edges, tentative Ruiz was unable to consistently close the gap and drag Jones into the type of high-pressure trench battle he desired. Because he's making a big man wait. You don't wait for a little guy. Ooh! 
Oh, he's got it. He's done it. Moving with all the poise and grace of a man in his prime, Jones outboxed, outmoved, and outlanded his lumbering foe. He stood and traded for not a split second longer than required to win a unanimous decision. He creatively picked his wrist. He excited the boxing world, and he dominated the fight. The winner, joining boxing's elite, the new heavyweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr. Victory enhanced Jones' legacy as a four-weight world champion and 2003 Fighter of the Year. Had he retired at that point, given the monumental accomplishment on top of an already growing legacy, the 34-year-old would have staked a legitimate claim as the greatest boxer of all time. He could have gone and had a full career and rode off in the sunset and been in Pensacola fishing, hunting, doing whatever he does. However, like so many before, Roy could not bring himself to exit the stage. And despite proposed contests with the heavyweight division's elite... Yeah, Tyson, you're not gonna fight again? Oh, okay, Tyson, I'm done. Just six months after defeating Ruiz, he made a premature return to light heavyweight against Florida rival Antonio Tarver. After his easy victory over Ruiz last March, Jones, in a surprising move, steps back down in weight in an attempt to reclaim the 175-pound titles he left behind. Jones snatched victory, but was beaten in the rematch and descended into a patchy streak of mixed results. As his career unraveled, the once invincible Pensacola pugilist suddenly appeared human. And showed, like, it, when the athleticism starts to slip away a little bit, Roy is normal. He's yeah. a human. He's a human. <laughs> yeah. He trotted the globe, desperately trying to rediscover the magic that had been so evident. On the night, Roy Jones Jr. defeated a heavyweight champion and looked unbeatable. You know, you could go back in his career and find whole years with two or three title defenses in which Jones didn't lose a round. So it's not unusual to see a whitewash on the scorecard halfway through. This means that I am pound for pound the baddest mother. You know what you want touch a pair of boxing gloves. I don't care what nobody say. Larry Merchant, anybody, I am the baddest. They can say what they want to say. Morgan, it's really kind of you to say that. Comments like this have us dancing on the ceiling, sailing along with clouds under our feet. We'll happily hang around as long as you'll have us. But rest assured, it won't give us light heads. We're still hard at work. We don't want you climbing the walls, waiting for the next Motivedia presentation.